We are going to continue with our media availabilities here at Bristol Motor Speedway for the 25th anniversary of the Food City 500. We are joined by Trevor Bain, um, who is a native of Knoxville and the driver of the number six Advocare Ford. Uh, welcome home, Trevor. I'm sure it's pretty special to get to race here at Bristol, and you're bringing a pretty solid start to the 2017 season back home to here. So what does it mean to be able to race here at Bristol? Yeah, well, as you guys know, this is the place that made me a NASCAR fan and made me want to do what I do. So uh, it's obviously a special place for me. Love racing here. And even if I wasn't from Knoxville, uh, I would love this racetrack. It's just really fun. And we've been successful here. So that always makes it more fun when you're fast and can run well. Uh, I think the last three races, we've had top 15s and a top five in this race last year. So uh, with the performance gains we've made so far this season, I'm really looking forward to getting on the track and seeing if those gains relate to Bristol as well. We will open up to questions for Trevor. Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start here with Jeff. Jeff Gluck yeah. from jeffgluck.com. Trevor, I'm kind of wondering about the VHT with the on and off rain that's expected throughout the weekend. How do you know how much you'll be able to trust it um, when you get in race conditions? Yeah, when I got here today and walked down the racetrack and saw how black it was, I was almost concerned it's too rubbered up. You know, sometimes at these racetracks, when rubber gets down throughout the weekend, the track slows down. So uh, it's pretty excessive. I, I don't know. I'm excited to get on the racetrack and see. Obviously, the only thing I've seen so far are the K&N cars, and they're using it. Um, you know, if I look at last year's race, I feel like it was a big benefit for the first 15 laps of a run. But as your tires fell off and you couldn't go to the gas as hard as you wanted to on exit, you moved up and tried to get the runs on exit just like you would a mile and a half. Uh, if that is the case, if it's useful for that again, I, I would be totally pumped and content about that. Uh, but we won't know till we get out there. And like you said, with the rain, uh, you think about road course races. When moisture gets in the air, you kind of run offline a little bit. You don't want to be on the rubber. So uh, I don't know how the chemical reacts to, to water, but I know how rubber reacts. And there's a lot of rubber down there. So uh, I'm looking forward to practice to kind of fill that out. Uh, I do know, you know, last year in practice, it was really fast. And everybody practiced down there. And then you got to the race, and you wish you had worked on your car on the top a little bit more. So for us, uh, again, I think I'll probably run down on it if it's fast for 15 laps or so. But even if our lap times aren't as quick, I still have to force myself to run the middle, run the top, work on my car where we know we're going to race at. We'll go to Jim, right next to Jeff. <clears throat> Jim Hunter, motorsport.com. We were talking to Ricky last week, and uh, we were talking about how the last couple seasons you guys have been hopeful because you started off better but then it didn't sustain through the whole season. He seemed to think that this year you guys had turned that corner and that it might be able to sustain. Do you feel the same way about your team? Well, I think it's different this year. Uh, last year we saw some success, but it was inconsistent. You know, one weekend I might be fast, the next maybe Greg or maybe Ricky, but we weren't all always consistent. We couldn't run door to door every race. It was kind of like one of us got lucky and hit a, a lucky setup and had a decent car build and we went and we ran well but if I look at last weekend at Texas what happened in practice when I crashed the primary last year and in years past I would have thought well we're done you know the backup's going to be terrible we just got lucky and the primary was fast but we're actually building fast race cars now they're building them with that intention and it actually works you know every car has been fast Ricky and I have finished door to door almost every weekend so we're able to consistently do that and I think that's what makes us hopeful it's not like we went to California and Texas with low grip and said, okay, we were pretty fast there. Now we're going to have this false hope that we're going to be good everywhere. Uh, I think, you know, Martinsville was a huge gain for us that we were both able to run in the top 10 at parts of the race. We've been terrible there in the past. So to see us on a flat racetrack have speed. Um, and I think the other part of it isn't just the result at the end of the day, but it's what's happening at the race shop. It's what's happening in our culture and our communication. Um, you know, a lot of the same people are there, the talented people that we've always had, but we're actually using them as valuable resources now. I feel like we're using their knowledge. Um, we're able to tap into that. The way we're functioning as a living, breathing organism, as a race team, we're, we're doing well together. And that's what's making the difference, you know? Uh, no Nobody got smarter over the offseason. We just figured out, and we're still figuring out, how to work better together, how to hold each other accountable without feeling like you're pointing the finger at everybody else and saying, hey, it's your fault that we're not running good. Uh, we're holding each other to a high standard. Um, you know, and as I've said before, 
focusing on results, saying we need to be running top 10, doesn't get you a result. You focus on the small things that you do every week that equal that result. And I think we're doing a better job at that. So, um, you know, as long as we continue to develop, um, as long as our engineers stay hungry and we don't get content with top 15 place finishes, um, because those become 20th later in the season, as long as we stay hungry and build on what we've already learned and stay to our goals, um, I think we're seeing our goals are, we're pretty good. We hit those goals and we're seeing results. So if we continue to hit those goals, uh, our potential is going to stay where it's at or get better throughout the season. And that's what we're excited about. We'll come over here to Lee. Lee Spencer Motorsport.com. When you got to Roush Fenway Racing, they were, were, they were pretty much at the pinnacle. Um, so uh, being a person of faith as you are, how have you use that to deal with what's going on there. And I mean, it's like when things can't get any worse and your teammate takes you out accidentally. I mean, it's silly stuff like that. I mean, how do you dig deep and, and attempt to persevere? Yeah, I mean, again, I think uh, we're results-based. I mean, that's what we do, right? We're all about results and racing. But for me, uh, obviously, as you mentioned, like my, my contentment comes from my faith and this is a job I have, so I want to do well at it though. I feel like God's given me ability, given me opportunity, and then given me a work ethic and I have to use all those the best that I can. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, I can't control everything, right? And if I can leave the racetrack and say, man, I prepared as hard as I could. I was as fit as I could be. I feel like I nailed every corner that I could nail. I did great on pit road and I did all those things 100% and we finished 20th. Well, that's all I had that day and I've got to be okay with that. Uh, but now the days when I make mistakes and crash my teammate or, or do things that, you know, I didn't prepare all the way or I fell out of the seat because I was tired, well, I needed to be doing more. And um, for me, I, I think that's what helps you on those tough days when all you have is a 20th place race car, but you know that you're doing everything that you can. You just got to be okay with that and uh, keep pushing your teammates, you know, pushing my crew chief, pushing my engineers to get more potential in the car. And that's what we're doing now. Um, I'm still not fixated on what is the end of the day result. I'm not fixated on is it 13th, is it 5th, is it a win. I'm fixated on doing my job the best that I can. And hopefully that equals wins and equals top fives. But uh, my faith has definitely played a huge role in that, me being able to be content in that. But I'm not going to lie, it's been tough at times. You know, when I first got to Roush, if you didn't qualify in the top 10, all their cars, I mean, it was a bad day. If you didn't run in the top 10, it was a bad day. And uh, we kind of lost that for a little while. But I, I feel like um, last weekend at Texas, you know, we're kind of back to that standard. Um, you know, I'm watching the pylon and qualifying and Ricky and I are able to jump up and, you know, we're um, mildly concerned with making the second round in qualifying. You know, we feel like we should do that every weekend. Whereas last year it was like, oh man, we made second round at times. And now the concern is third round. So, um, you know, you just keep firing away. You keep coming back hungry. And I know this is where God's put me. So I'm, I can't let results beat me down, I guess, at the end of the day. And uh, just stay fired up, stay hungry for it. Yes, we'll go to Bob and then Jeff and Chris. Uh, Bob Hocker, ESPN. Does the fact that you have confidence in your cars help you on a weekend like this where who knows how much practice you're going to get? Yeah, I mean, especially since it's Bristol where we've had success, as you and I talked this morning, uh, you know, last year Ricky had a second place, I had a fifth place, so we know we have a, a decent starting package. Uh, the track hasn't changed, the cars haven't changed that much, um, you know, as far as loads and setups are concerned, so no practice, I feel like we would still be pretty close, you know, we, we have a good baseline to go off of, uh, that gives you confidence, and as I said, I, I'm really kind of anxious to get on racetrack to see what kind of speed we have and see what our cars are like because we have made so many gains at all the racetracks this year and if last year we were a fifth place car I'm, I'm wondering are we going to be capable of you know winning a race here this weekend I, I don't know the answer to that yet because I haven't been on track but uh, that is in the back of my mind right now that man if we've made the same gains here at Bristol that we've made everywhere else then we could be a contender we'll go to Jeff and then to Chris um, at Texas, when you crashed the primary car, you were really down, disappointed, and said it was like the best car you'd ever had. What what happens like uh, immediately after that? Do you do you just go up to the team and say, you know, hey, I'm sorry? Like, do you have to go out of your way to be like extra sorry? Like, what 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 does a driver do in that situation? Well, that's a fine line, you know. For me, uh, you've got to move on. But if you move on too quickly, it looks like you don't care that you just crashed the team's race car and their hard work. And if you beat yourself up all day, then you're no good to the team either. So I think uh, what happened was as soon as I crashed, you know, I'm like, 
dang, man, I just crashed the fastest race car I've ever had. I'm in the infield care center because they force you to go. And I'm looking at the TV and I see the backup rolling out of the trailer and I'm like, this is terrible. You know, I just feel awful for my guys. Uh, but what's nice is that my team right now, the way that, like I said, the culture of communication, we are a team. So if my pit crew messes up one time on pit road, I'm not going off on them, you know what I mean? And and when I crash the primary car at Texas, when we're at the top of the board, they don't come in and say, you stink. Like, we have trust in each other, confidence, and we know that we're pushing that limit. I mean, we were top of the board partially because I was moving the groove out into turn one and finally took too big of a chunk. So they know I'm pushing 100%, and, uh, you know, mistakes are going to happen, but I would say I'm pretty hard on myself for those mistakes. That's one of those things, like I was telling Lee, um, when I rate myself at the end of the day, it's based off of how did I execute, you know, not the end of the day result. And so that mistake is on that checklist I go through and, um, you know, but I think you just, uh, you're frustrated, you show it, then you come in, your team's like, all right, man, let's go. And you got to pick yourself up and move on. Um, but what really helped me overcome that was the fact that my team got a backup car out of the hauler, got it on the racetrack in 25 minutes. I mean, that is impressive. For us to crash in a 50 minute practice, get a, two more runs on the racetrack, uh, you know, I was laughing. Uh, one of the 11 guys, Denny's team came over and he's like, man, if that happened to us, we'll be hoping we were on the track tomorrow. So uh, the confidence that that built for my team to know that we're doing the right things. Um, I think it's maybe my second backup car in three years. So it's not like they were expecting to use it, but they were still prepared and uh, prep preparing for the unknowns is what's going to make you successful and they're doing that well. We're going to go to Chris and then to Dustin. Chris Knight, CatchFence.com. Hey Trevor, I was just curious your thoughts on moving the cup race from night to day in Charlotte in the fall. I love Saturday races. <laughs> it's an extra day at home. So <laughs> um, I love night racing and Saturday races, but you know what? I'll be at the racetrack whatever day and whatever time they tell me to be. Um, you know, I just, uh, man, I, I'm a fan of Saturday night races all the time uh, for the pure fact that we get that extra day. But other than that, the racing's fine. The fans, you know, if, if it draws a bigger crowd or better TV, then I'm all for it. And Marcus and the guys at SMI know what they're doing. So I fully trust that they're making good decisions. But um, I'm sure there's already been enough opinions about Saturday versus Sunday. And I'll just uh, get my schedule when I get it and show up at the racetrack. <laughs> To me, as far as the actual racing, um, you know, it doesn't, you, you know kind of, okay, if we race at night, my car needs to drive like this in practice. If we race during the day, my car needs to drive like this. And you make those adjustments. Um, it's obviously less grip during the day. You slide around a little more. So I think, you know, the biggest thing that will happen is if it's a day race, you may see the top come in a little bit more. If it's a night race, the bottom is 100% going to be the way to go. So you think about that as you go into the weekend. You think about, do I need to work on the bottom, the top? Does my car need to be tight, loose at the end of practice? And you just uh, go from there. Can we go to Dustin? Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, you obviously got your first win with the Wood Brothers. Elliot Sadler got his first win with the Wood Brothers. Ryan Blaney seems like he could be on, on target to do that. As you kind of gain perspective, uh, what does it mean to be a part of the fraternity of drivers that have won at the Wood Brothers, and what's it like to see what they've done? At, can because you've seen the the good and the struggles that they've gone through. Well, you're you're right about gaining perspective. Uh, I think I every race every year I appreciate what we did even more. You know, I see how tough it is and how I just kind of showed up as this 20 year old kid and thought, oh man, this is how it's going to be, and then you realize how tough it can be at times. So I'm. I feel super blessed and fortunate to have had that and to have done it with the Wood Brothers. I mean, um, that's a special family. And for the fact that they've stayed in the sport, stayed relevant in the sport and competitive, it's a huge testimony to who they are as people and what they've done as a family. I mean, they aren't a huge corporation organization. You know, it's still very much run by Leonard, Eddie and Lynn and um, even Glenn, you know, he's still out going strong. So those guys are incredible people, their whole family, their wives and kids and everybody that's involved. Uh, you know, they've managed to stay relevant in a sport that requires, you know, huge organizations to do that. So, um, you know, that's why drivers like myself have had opportunities to win in their cars. They always find a way and with the help of Ford to be in the right partnerships, you know, their partnership with Roush and then now their partnership with Penske. Um, they've got good equipment and, uh, you know, you're right, Ryan Blaney's been super fast this year. Um, you know, as, as he 
continues to learn as a driver. Um, as I continue to learn as a driver, um, you know, they have the speed. They've just got to put together the full race, and whether it's pit road things or whatever it might be, um, you can't avoid wins when you're fast. You know, they just happen. And uh, I think that those guys are on the path to that for sure. And uh, I'm, I'm happy for the Woods. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like the Daytona 500. I mean, there's just certain things that you get to experience as a person and to be a part of that group that has helped the Wood Brothers to win in every decade and to, you know, have that relationship with them. I mean, Eddie and Lynn still talk about it with me to this day, what that meant for them. And so, um, man, there, there aren't many things in life that you still talk about six years later and seven years or 10 years later, like we will be. And um, for us to have had that experience together and, to, you know, like you said, it's a fraternity with, with a lot of guys who won in that race car. So, um, and not just guys that have won with the Wood Brothers, but won cup races, you know? I mean, um, obviously I hope to continue in my cup career and go and win a lot of races, but um, to be in that, in that group of drivers that have won cup races and to have done it with the Wood Brothers is really special. Yes, sir. Any final questions in the middle? Trevor Adam Niemeyer with Fox TV in Cincinnati. Uh, a quick question for you. I know Michael Annette mentioned something earlier. I've seen guys send out pictures on social media. How much do you guys like to go back and watch prior races and watch film to study, kind of like in other sports where guys watch film to prepare? Yeah, um, you know, preparation is a huge part of my week and weekend. Um, you know, it's something that as a young driver, I kind of took for granted. I tried to do all this on natural ability, and you realize really fast when you get to this level that everybody's got natural ability and you got to work pretty hard at it. So I feel like this year is the most systematic I've been in that approach uh, with notes and with dartfish videos, which are the overlays from past races, and with watching full races. You know, uh, in my training, I have a lot of time indoors in the gym or on a spin bike or on a treadmill and I kind of have it playing or I'll go through and you know today I went back and watched both races again quickly you know skipping through to certain parts but uh, it's really important to to do that to know what you're going into um, you know just like earlier when I was talking about seemed like 15 laps you could run on the bottom and then you had to move to the top in the last race things like that you forget in six months or a year um, you know when we go back to these racetracks you would think we would remember everything but I can't remember where I qualified or finished the last race I kind of have to go online and look and see what, how I did so um, you know I, I really it's important for me to go back through my notes um, and it's important right after the race to take good notes um, a lot of times you think oh I'll, well I'll remember that when I come back and you don't write it down and you get back and you don't remember it until about halfway through the race and uh, so for me note taking has been really important uh, after the race um, you know some drivers probably laugh at all this stuff I'm saying like oh you don't need to do any of that but uh, I'm under the impression that if there's something out there that can give me an advantage at all then I'm going to use that to the best that I can all right Trevor well thanks for joining us this afternoon and good luck this weekend thank you guys for having me